Hey everyone, this is Dr. Francisco Maya, physical therapist and owner with the Canine PT, and we specialize in helping senior dogs improve their independence with their daily routine so they can live their golden years without the need of pain medication. And today we're going to talk about three simple things you can start right away to help improve your senior dog's mobility, especially around the home. So one of the major things um, our clients have, one of the major issues is the fact that as their pups are aging, they're starting to have a hard time getting around the house. Um, they're starting to have a hard time moving around and doing simple things uh, on the daily lives like they used to be able to do before with no issues. It can become, it can become a little bit harder. So I'm going to touch on three different things and three different solutions for you guys, okay? So the first one is going to be uh, eating time. So a lot of times as they age, um, they start to eat a little bit less, getting a little bit picky around uh, uh, food time. And one of the issues could be the food itself, so that would be like a separate thing. But one solution that actually works very well, especially for uh, taller dogs, is raising the food and the water bowl. And it, it, it might seem like it wouldn't make that much of a difference, but especially for those taller dogs that might have a neck problem, maybe neck arthritis or something like that, that uh, it, it can become really hard for them to reach down to eat. It can become an uncomfortable position that even though they're hungry, sometimes they, they want to avoid it because it's just not comfortable. So by elevating the water dish, by elevating the food bowl uh, to about shoulder height or so, so that way they can easily be staying in a nice position without having to reach down too far, it can make a huge difference because then they're not putting a whole lot of stress on the neck and it makes comfortable. And I've seen clients uh, uh, over and over again say that um, that helped their dog eat a lot better, um, eat a little bit faster, maybe finish the whole um, the whole bowl of food and everything. So that would be solution number one. The other problem that we see quite often happening is with mobility around the house, especially when it comes to slippery floors like hardwood and tile floor, and dogs start having issues uh, uh, holding their balance with those uh, with those floorings and that creates two things one of course it creates the risk of injury because they can slip and fall and we, we don't want them getting hurt of course and the other thing too is that it, it creates uh, uh, an issue within their confidence too because they they start getting scared of getting around because they don't want to hurt themselves so that that confidence plays a major role in it as well so i'm gonna give two solutions to help with that uh, the the most common one that people think of is of course to cover the the area that their pet uh, spends a lot of time on, especially the areas that have hardwood and tile floors. So it can be area rugs, runners, yoga mats work really well. And then one tip with the yoga mats, if you have a large area that you want to cover with yoga mats and you don't necessarily want to buy a bunch of yoga mats, you can go online and buy a huge row of a yoga mat, like 20, 25 yard yoga mat and then you just cut for different lengths that you need. So it works really well for large rooms. It works really well for long hallways because you can, you can cover the whole area and just cut the length that you need. And the yoga mats are very easy to clean too. So if there are any accidents or anything like that, they're very easy to clean. And then the, the second solution for this problem of slipping and sliding around and falls is to make sure that you're taking good good care of their nails and their paws and that's the one that it's often overlooked so when dogs are walking around on those floors you can see that they're kind of like gripping with their nails because they're kind of like scared you know so it comes back to that confidence issue and and of course the nail doesn't provide as much traction as the paw pads does that's what gives them the traction is the paw pads so making sure that the nails are not super long making sure that they're nice and trim nice and short frequently so that way the nails are not getting in the way of providing them the traction that they need and also making sure that uh, if you have a breed that is a little bit hairier making sure that you're trimming the hair between their paw pads between their toes because that hair also can get in between the paw pad and the floor and take away some of the friction and cause them also uh, to, to slip and feel a little bit unstable okay so there are a lot more things that we can talk about there's a lot of different issues that um, um, that affects pet parents like yourself there are other solutions as well but these are the three main ones that I see quite often and that I'm discussing 
on a daily basis pretty much with all of my pet parents that have senior dogs. So I hope you found this information helpful. If you did, please write down in the comment below, please share this video and stay tuned for next week when we're going to talk about how to modify physical activity, how to modify the daily walks for your senior pet so that way they're still getting the exercise that they need but in a safe and a healthy way. Alright, you guys all have a good weekend and thank you so much.